Hello and welcome to another episode of the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Um, for today's episode, we're going to talk about autopilot development using model-based design. And uh, joining me today to talk about this, uh, this really interesting topic for you know for students taking part in aerospace competitions, I've got a very special guest from um, all the way from Rome in Italy. So hello, Claudio. Uh, welcome to the Robotics Arena. Hello. It's a pleasure to have Thank you, you here today. Pleasure is mine. Okay, uh, so Claudio, do, 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 you, do you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about your team and uh, the competition that you all take part in? Okay, the uh, Sapiens of Flight team is made of uh, more than 25 members, uh, which are all, uh, who are all students from the Faculty of uh, Aeronautical Engineering of uh, La Sapienza University. Mm -hmm. uh, we joined the DBF competition up to 2017, and then we started uh, participating in the SUAS competition uh, since uh, 2018 and uh, for the first year we joined this competition with a custom autopilot which was uh, all develop developed in Simulink by MATLAB uh, and it was entirely custom both in its hardware and uh, software. Uh, our project for the new competition in 2019 is to design a brand new UAV uh, with smart uh, construction only in composite material and to adapt the old autopilot software to the new aerodynamic properties of the new aircraft. Okay, very cool. Without wasting too much time, let's let's jump into today's agenda. Um, so Claudio is going to go over a little bit about what autopilots are, what do they do, how do we build them. And then he's going to talk about the the logic and the architecture involved in the autopilot that his team built. We're going to talk a little bit about aircraft modeling and real-time simulation. Um, and then Claudia is going to do a quick software demonstration and then show us uh, the sort of meat of this video, which is which is uh, his team using um, a DSpace platform to, to do hardware in the loop simulations, which is very common, um, common design methodology that's followed in the aerospace industry. And then we do some key takeaways and point you guys to resources to get uh, started with your competitions. So without wasting too much time, uh, Claudio, I'm going to hand the stage over to you. Take it away. Okay, thank you. Uh, as you can see, the, the full autopilot is developed in Simulink by Metworks. Uh, this means that uh, we designed the, the software starting from the, the logic of, of the autopilot controllers, but also uh, in the communication which is uh, between the onboard computer, which is the hardware of the autopilot, uh -huh. and the ground station uh, on the ground, of course, uh, together with the controllers of the autopilot. Since uh, it's uh, a custom uh, software, we also wrote uh, all the drivers of the sensor, uh, which are uh, used to uh, calculate the dynamic state of the airplane while, it, while it's uh, flying, actually, and to reconstruct the dynamic state of the airplane itself and uh, allow the PID controllers, PID controllers to, to do the rest of the job. Yes, we started from a, from a commercial reproduction of a Yakolev airplane, uh, from an RC model, okay. uh, we started uh, building uh, all the aerodynamic uh, database uh, of this airplane uh, to do the correct tuning of the autopilot mm -hmm. and of the PID controllers. Uh, the logic behind the hardware of the onboard computer in which we implement the autopilot is the possibility to have uh, a low-cost components uh, which means that uh, all the hardware is basically made of uh, Raspberry and Arduino mm -hmm. and other okay. very low-cost components. Okay. Uh, is is designed to be easy to handle, which means that uh, it's all contained in a small case. Uh, it means that we can replace it in uh, every single airplane we want with the necessary space to 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 uh, to host the onboard computer and. Uh, also, the onboard computer has special plug connectors, uh, which uh, allows us to plug all the, the sensors uh, which are used to perform the calculation for the autopilot. Okay. Uh, so, there are different modes in which uh, our autopilot works. Uh, basically, there is a, a tool of networks, which is the state flow, mm -hmm. that we use to uh, manage the transition between these modes, uh, as uh, we will see later. Uh, basically, we have uh, manual and uh, automatic modes, uh, and a uh, standby mode between them 
in which we can uh, manage the transition between the two modes. And there's also the possibility from, the, from a backup pilot to, to take controls over the aircraft. Okay. There are actually uh, two ways in which this can happen. Uh, the first is uh, the pilot uh, simply moved the, the sticks on the remote controllers mm -hmm. and the Arduino uh, gives more in, um, priority to the command sent by the backup pilot uh, okay. rather than the one uh, uh, sent by the autopilot, which means that uh, if the autopilot is performing uh, a right hand turn for the airplane, mm -hmm. Um, and the, the backup pilot is telling the, the airplane to go the other way, uh, Arduino will give priority to the command of the backup pilot and to send the, the airplane to the right direction. Okay. The other way in which this works is the safe mode, in which we simply activate a switch on the remote controller, so we deactivate Arduino in case a uh, is crashing or has a problem with the running of the autopilot, and the backup pilot has full control over the aircraft. Correct. And and uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, this is actually part of the rules for the competition, right? You have to have a yes a, a safe mode or, a, or or an override switch, so to say, uh, that, that can help land the plane in case of in case it goes out of control. Yes, this is a safety requirement, which is strictly highlighted in the in the rules of the competition. Correct. Correct. Okay. Perfect. And basically, the, the architecture of the autopilot is uh, subdivided into internal and external loops, uh, which uh, we will see later uh, what that means. Okay. Uh, there it is. Uh, from the external loops, uh, we generate the references from the, for the internal loops. Uh, as you can see in the picture, we have the speed controller, altitude, and the heating controller. Uh, basically, from the dynamic state of the aircraft, which is uh, reconstructed, started from the data sent from the sensor. Uh, the in external loops generate the reference value for the internal loops, okay. which are the actual PID controllers uh, from which the actual commands to the actuators are yeah, and 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 this is this looks like a pretty common. Uh, it, it looks like a pretty common control scheme in in autopilots, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's a very common architecture uh, for uh, the autopilots of uh, basically almost uh, every airplane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, so um, about the aircraft modeling for real time simulation, uh, we use also Simulink for. Uh, creating a model of the aircraft which uh, represents the behavior of the aircraft mm -hmm. both in, a, in an aerodynamic way and both in a mechanical way. Uh, there are a lot of, of things which are uh, simulated in, the, in this model, uh, starting also from the six degrees of freedom of the airplane dynamics uh, up to the atmosphere, atmosphere and the environmental model. Uh, for, for instance, we have the deterministic model of the gust uh, of the boundary layer, and also uh, we simulate the, the variation of the gravity with the altitude. Correct. We also have a model for the servos, servo motor, which is uh, represented by a first order dynamic, and also the model of the sensor, basically the GPS, the inertial sensor, and uh, the pitot tube and the barometric altimeter. Yeah, uh, uh, just a quick point to note: the the the, the aerospace block set, which is a a, um, a library within Simulink, gives you yes. um, gives you these functions directly. So 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 these are pre-built pre-built blocks that you can just drag into your model and and, and use them as. Um, I'm, I'm sure Cla Claudia would agree that they're pretty useful. Y yes, yes, <laughs> the the aerodynamic uh, uh, package for from uh, Metworks is very useful for doing these uh, these things. Okay. Then uh, I will show you the working principle of the mm -hmm. software we use for the autopilot. Okay. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, as you can see here, there is a, a very general view over the, the structure of the autopilot. Mm -hmm. uh, we have different blocks. The orange one are the blocks which implement the mapping protocol uh, okay. for the communication between the onboard computer, as I was saying before, and the, the ground station, which is uh, okay. the computer running the 
the mission plan. Okay, so so and, so, uh, so how have you built this link? Have you used um, have you used like an S function block or something like that to 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 build this uh, map link? Yes, we actually... use the MATLAB S function blocks uh, and uh, to 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 implement the the map link message. Okay. Okay. And then, then there's the, the, the green block in which there's the, the real core of, of the autopilot, uh, the PID controllers, and uh, also the management system. Mm -hmm. And then in the, the white block beneath, uh, we have the, the drivers of the sensor and also the, the driver which uh, allows the communication between Arduino and Raspberry. Okay. Because uh, it's necessary to use a common filter. For okay. an autopilot, mm -hmm. but uh, since Arduino is not uh, really powerful to to run both the autopilot and the common filter, we are using two separate boards: uh, okay. the Arduino for the autopilot and Raspberry for the common filter. Okay. And uh, we also implemented the communication between uh, the two boards. Okay. So if okay, yep. If we go into the uh, autopilot block, we can see here uh, the management system in the in the yellow one. Mm -hmm. Uh, in which we see the, the state flow of MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, here is where uh, we manage the transition between the different modes of the autopilot. Uh, as you can see, we have manual here and automatic here, and uh, also the pilot intervention between uh, the two modes. Uh, as I was saying before, uh, the pilot is giving commands on the stick of the remote controller, and uh, the automatic mode is... Uh, automatically giving giving a, a higher priority to the backup pilot. Okay. And there's also the safe mode, which is activated by uh, the backup pilot by simply switching the, the, the switch on the remote controller. Mm -hmm. There is also another mode we developed uh, in the last uh, few months, which is the so-called the go home mode. Uh, it's an external mode. Uh, it's uh, meant to let the, the, the aircraft uh, go back to a home waypoint, uh, which is uh, set before uh, takeoff. Okay. And this is meant when, uh, for instance, the, the the aircraft is out of the range. Correct. Uh, Correct. Um, for uh, sending uh, waypoints or parameters to the autopilot. Yep. And since the the remote controller has got uh, in a much higher range than the, mm -hmm. the, the antenna of the autopilot. Uh, we use uh, another switch on the remote controller to enter this mode okay. and uh, tell the, the autopilot to drive the aircraft back to the home waypoint. Okay. okay. So this is the management system. Yep. If we go back again to the previous screen, here there's the this block we have uh, the definition of the of the five modes. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the, we define the waypoint navigation, the vectorial guidance here, the automatic takeoff, automatic landing, and the, the go home mode. Okay. Uh, we developed both the waypoint navigation and vectorial guidance because the vectorial guidance is kind of a, a mode which is used really in commercial liner, hmm. commercial aircraft. Uh, okay. It's a mode which allows us to to assign to the aircraft uh, um, determined uh, flight parameters such as the heading angle, uh, weight of climb, velocity and altitude, just like uh, a real pilot uh, um, does in, uh, in the cockpit of, the, of, yeah. the, of a real airplane. In the orange uh, block we have the external loops and switch. Uh, as you can see we have the speed controller up here. Mm -hmm the altitude controller and also the heating angle controller. Yep. Uh, so inside here we have uh, PID controllers, uh, for instance I opened the, velocity, the speed controller. So actually this is a proportional uh, in integral controller instead of a yep. purely PID controller yep. uh, from which uh, from starting from the error on the velocity mm -hmm. value uh, we recall the constant parameters uh, which are set at the beginning of the autopilot uh, and we perform the PI proportional integral controller uh, to generate the references for, for uh, the internal uh, loops uh, which uh, I will, uh, will show you later on. Okay. So this is basically the, the architecture on the external loops. Uh, we generate reference value which are then sent into the internal loops. Mm -hmm. 
each other inside this uh, red block yep. here. So all we have uh, all the controllers uh, uh, from which we generate the commands to the servo motors of the of the aircraft. Uh, so we have a throttle channel, pitch angle, pitch channel, roll channel. Um, it's sort of divided into uh, more channel in order to control all the dynamics mm -hmm. of the of the airplane. Uh, we have uh, different behavior um, between uh, the throat, the response of the throttle, the response of the yo, or the, or, uh, the pitch angle. Okay. So we have uh, sort of multiple channel system, but uh, somehow they are also connected together because uh, um, you know the, the the dynamics of an airplane are strictly uh, coupled. Yep. So, which means that uh, if the um, autopilot is sending uh, a command on the on the rudder, uh, that's not only generating uh, a variation on the, the heading end. angle, but also on, in the, on the, the roll angle Correct. and yep. other vari variables. Yep. So, at the end of all these uh, PID controllers, we have actual, the actual commands sent to the to the actuators, which are then uh, saved in this sort of flag variable okay. uh, command the autodori. Okay. This entire piece of your code is, is, is running on the Arduino, correct? If I'm not mistaken? Yes. Uh, all, all this is running in the Arduino. Okay. Except except the, 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 the Kamen filter. Yes, exactly. Did, did you actually land up using any of, of Simulink's uh, code gen capabilities or the hardware support packages to deploy this directly yes, onto of the... Of course, we, okay. we use the Arduino Simulink support package, uh, which allows us to generate uh, directly the C, plus, the C code for, uh, for Arduino instead of uh, writing all the C code, which uh, would be uh, a lot more uh, time demanding uh, in terms of uh, code writing because... Uh, yep. You know, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and this is good. If you make a couple of small changes in your model, you can just hit build once again. And it'll it'll build the latest code yes. rather than having yes. to, you know, exactly. sift through lines and lines of code trying to find uh, exactly. you know, that one gain that you changed somewhere or something like that. And that, yep. that's the great advantage of using Simulink and uh, such an um, a hardware support package for uh, for Arduino or also Raspberry for uh, the common filter okay. as well. Okay, cool. And uh, underneath here we have uh, all the, the driver of the, of the sensors, mm -hmm. uh, starting from, for example, the, the GPS up here. Okay. Uh, okay. In which we implemented the the MATLAB uh, um, as function to to build the TAIP parser, which is the the protocol used uh, by our uh, GPS sensor. We are actually uh, modifying this uh, MATLAB S function because we want to use uh, uh, another GPS with a much more recent uh, protocol, which is the NMEA protocol, okay. which is uh, way more recent. Okay. Then we have also the the driver of the inertial sensor here, mm -hmm. in which uh, we read the, the signal sent from the inertial sensor, and we have uh, as outputs uh, the, all the, the data in terms of uh, acceleration and uh, angles. Okay. Okay. And then uh, finally we have. Uh, also did something similar for the pressure sensor, which is the barometric altimeter, mm -hmm. and uh, from the pitot tube, which gives up the velocity, indi indicated air speed here, in the sense of the rounds per second of the engine, and uh, also the uh, pressure, and uh, sorry, the current and the voltage sensor, which uh, uh, gives us the direct measuring of the state of the battery, which okay. is uh, um, supplying the avionic box, yep. which is the onboard computer of the autopilot. Okay. So basically, then the, the autopilot basically uh, it's here and uh, ends in, in this green block in which we convert the, the data computed by the autopilot into a, a signal which is sent to the servo motors mm -hmm. because the autopilot logic works with them. Uh, angles in degrees, uh, which means that uh, it uh, generates uh, angles of the rotation of the control surfaces. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, since we are using servo motors, uh, we have to convert this information into a PWM 
Correct. Uh, signal. Correct. Uh, to do this, we we made um, with the through a MATLAB S function block uh, something similar to to convert this data into uh, a time duration of the PWM signal. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I'm 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 actually I'm actually really excited to to see how you actually <laughs> implemented this on a on on, on a real time machine. Uh, do, do you want to go and show us how you did that? Yes. Sure. Okay, I'm showing you very quickly uh, an overview of the um, simulating model, which is uh, loaded into the this space platform. Okay, you see some few error messages on the blocks of simulating because uh, there are some library missing on my computer. But basically, the the architecture of the model uh, is this one. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we use uh, um, the this space platform to perform the simulation, which means that uh, the onboard computer is plugged to the this space, which receives the commands from uh, coming from Arduino uh, here in this block. And uh, by knowing the dynamic behavior of the of the airplane in the red block, uh, it simulates in real time the the behavior which the airplane would have in uh, in the real situation of the autopilot running. Correct. And and, so and this and this, uh, this this red block is is where your your six degree of freedom uh, block. Yes, is. exactly. Correct. As you can see here, there are all the the aerodynamic yeah. model of the of the aircraft, yep. the of the engine, uh, the inertial properties, uh, landing gear, the atmosphere, all which is uh, simulated, uh, which I was telling you before in the few, um, first slides. Correct. Uh, atmosphere Correct. model, Earth model, uh, and the equation of motion. Yep. So I'll show you very quickly the, um, a video in which we perform the simulation, uh, hardware simulation in our uh, lab. So we start from the Q-Ground control, which is uh, something very similar to mission panel for PixHawk. And this is control desk in which we see all the data sent from Arduino to the disk space in real time. Mm -hmm. So we are, mm, we can see the state of the throttle of the and all the other uh, servo models and uh, commands. We use also a serial port communication to connect the disk space platform to our computer so that we can have also a, a graphic view of the behavior of the airplane with the flight gear. Okay. Which is uh, in the in the left hand side of the, of the screen. So what are, we are doing here is setting the automatic takeoff uh, to one. So it means that going back to the state flow of the simulate model, we are entering the automatic takeoff uh, mode of okay. the uh, autopilot. Uh -huh. So we transmit and uh, then the autopilot is doing the rest of the job. Okay. So basically we can see it's a little bit sluggish uh, because of the screen setting, but uh, uh, actually, we we see all the data on the control desk uh, application for uh, this space, uh, and that's the real uh, uh, utility of this uh, hardware in the loop simulation because uh, control desk allows us to to understand the, that uh, what's going on uh, is a proper behavior of the airplane or not. Okay. So this is a really powerful. Uh, a facility because uh, the hardware in the loop simulation allows us also to uh, implement a new functionality on the autopilot and uh, test it without going to a real airfield, correct, which correct. is uh, a lot of time saving. Yep. So we are here changing the mode. We set zero to the automatic takeoff and we enter the um, vectorial guidance by setting the heading mm -hmm. uh, to one. So we enter the vectorial guidance mode and we set the heading angle to 210 degrees. Uh, so we are actually simulating the airplane on uh, Fiumic Fiumicino Airport in Rome. Okay. And we see the airplane rotating correctly. Nice. If okay. I skip uh, ahead to the... Yes. And here we, we pass on to the waypoint navigation. So we set uh, one to the variable uh, waypoint navigation. We enter the waypoint navigation mode in the autopilot. And we simply click uh, waypoints on the, on the map, which is mm -hmm. uh, uploaded from Google Maps. And then uh, uh, again, the, the autopilot is doing the rest of the job. And uh, okay. we can see the simulation going on. Yep, that's awesome. That's, that's a really cool use case. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay.
so well, uh, thank you so much, Claudia, for showing us this the, this work that you've done. Um, I'm, I'm sure our, our viewers would, would really enjoy um, enjoy watching your video. Um, so uh, we, we're quickly going to go back into into the presentation, um, and, and we're just going to do. Claudia's just going to wrap things up, and then I'm going to show you some point you to some key takeaways and um, show you how to do better in your competitions. Uh, this is the, the, the disk space platform that we use in our laboratory. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, there's the avionic box uh, or onboard computer, uh, which is uh, plugged to the disk space platform. Uh, these plugs here are from, for the commands sent uh, from Arduino to the, to the actual servo motors, which are simulated in the disk space platform. And uh, here, where I'm pointing with the with the arrow, and um, there are the, the, the signals uh, uh, simulating the behavior of the sensor, mm -hmm. uh, such as the pitot tube, the inertial sensor, uh, the GPS, and um, the rest of the sensors. And this is the prototype of the avionic box, we, which is then installed into the airplane, and uh, also these antennas, which uh, uh, let us communicate with uh, between the ground station and uh, the onboard computer. And uh, this is the computer actually running a uh, crew ground control and uh, flight gear and also the remote controller for, for uh, simulating the, the pilot intervention over the, the Arduino autopilot. Okay. So the, the key takeaways of this presentation is that, are that um, the following one. Uh, we actually made a, um, use the Simulink to to realize a full custom autopilot for uh, UAVs. Uh, this means that uh, Simulink, thanks to the um, support package for uh, uh, Arduino or Raspberry hardware, uh, allows us to, to skip writing all the, the C code and uh, to generate very quickly by simply deploying the Simulink code to, to the hardware once it's connected to the, to the computer. Uh, and then uh, the, the other key takeaway is the, the power of the hardware in the loop simulation. Uh, as I was saying before, this is a very powerful uh, uh, tool because uh, it really allows to, to develop uh, functionalities uh, on the software and to test them uh, without uh, going to the airfield uh, and uh, with the risk of uh, having done something wrong and uh, risking to, to crash the airplane. Uh, this is a real powerful uh, item. Uh, it, it requires to, to be done um, very in detail because uh, as you saw before, there are a lot of uh, things that uh, needs to be simulated in the simulic model of the, of the aircraft for a more realistic hardware in the loop yep. simulation. But uh, uh, once the, all the model is built properly, uh, this uh, still is a very powerful uh, tool. And uh, for the future development, developments, um, we are thinking to implement a sort of uh, uh, auto-tune uh, functionalities, so which means that uh, we can basically install the onboard computer on uh, every single uh, airplane we want uh, and with the under scheduled um, sort of flights, uh, the, the autopilot will be able basically to acquire the, the dynamic uh, model of the, of the aircraft and set uh, the, the parameters of the autopilot, which means the constants of the PID controllers, uh, correctly for the, um, for the airplane on which uh, is installed, just like a, a real PIXOC does. Uh, this is basically the main difference between uh, our uh, autopilot and the commercial one, uh, just like a PIXOC. Okay. Okay, well, uh, uh, thank you so much, Claudio, for, for taking the time out to, yeah. to share all of this with us. You're welcome. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure what, what Claudio meant by hardware in the loop testing being very resource intensive, it's definitely one of those things. It has a very high initial cost, but it does pay uh, pay dividends over the course of time because as your team moves from year to year, you just need to change a few things in your in your airplane model, but you still have a, a working airplane mathematical model, which is uh, which is always a good thing to have. So finally, to, to, to wrap things up, uh, as as always, you can get in touch with us through the multiple avenues that we have posted on there. Um, don't forget about our software offer. We do offer complementary MATLAB and Simulink to SUAS teams. So if you're interested to do the same kind of fun stuff that Claudio and his team have been doing, don't forget to to download the software and, and hopefully we can we can help you guys get started with that. Thank you for tuning in to another episode and we hope to see you soon.